Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're in Photoshop and we're going to be looking at a really simple exercise to go from something like this to something like this. So basically applying materials, realistic materials to, through Photoshop to a basic kind of white render that you can get out of Revit or Rhino or SketchUp or um, pretty much all rendering tools. Um, so that's pretty much it, we're about to get into it, but before we start, if you've got any comments, questions or suggestions about this video or future videos, please leave those below. And if, you've got, uh, if you want to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button and the little bell to get notified. Otherwise, let's get straight into it. So we're starting here with just a basic uh, white render, and we've also downloaded basic timber texture and a basic kind of concrete paver or concrete tile texture as well. So we're going to start with the uh, concrete paper texture actually, so I'm just going to hit Control A and then Control C. So Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and then back into this scene and do Control V to just paste that there. Um, now one thing we want to do with our layers here to organize is this cube layer, so if I just turn this off, so our cube layer, this one here, we just want to make sure that that's on top, and I'm just going to name it firstly, so cube, and leave that on top. So everything else is going to come below it. And we also want to change this from normal to multiply. So if I turn this back on, you can see now we can see through that, that cube layer. So we're going to grab this uh, concrete layer now and if I just zoom out a little, do control T to transform and just shrink this up a little bit. That like that, hit enter, zoom in and we want to duplicate this. So control J to duplicate and then hit V select and move and holding down shift to move it horizontally across so now we've got a much bigger tile for that so we've got these two layers here now and we want to combine them so we hold down shift to select them both and then control e to merge them you can see that they're one layer now if i move these it's all the one layer and we may as well name it let's say concrete and we can now move this up here and I'm going to do control T to transform and we just want to hold down control and move these points in there and move these points out to give it a bit of a perspective look so it's obviously going to get smaller as it goes back into the, the background so something like that you can play around with uh, whatever you think looks and feels kind of right but I think that's pretty close to what we're after Next we want to mask out, so obviously now our concrete texture is going through the entire uh, image. We don't want that, we want it to, uh, we want the cube obviously to sit in front of that. So I'm just going to hide this for a second and hit Z and zoom in here. And we just want to draw a selection around our cube. So I'm going to use the polygon lasso tool and click, can't perfectly see this point something like that there here we're going to kind of eyeball it a little bit and don't worry about being totally perfect in Photoshop you can always kind of adjust these things afterwards anyway it's just um, and it does make it a little bit easy once you start layering things on you can kind of come back and chop and change and tie the little things up and edges and things like that um, so now we've done that and we'll go back to the concrete turn this layer back on and if we zoom out just so you can see this, you can see now we've just selected uh, this area in here, right? But if we hold down Shift, Control, and I, you can see now we've flipped it, so you can see that around there. So we've now selected the inverse. And if we just come down here to uh, Add Layer Mask, click this little button, we can now, uh, we've basically hidden everything else. So if we, you can see that also in this little thumbnail here. So the black has been masked out. And the white, which is everything around the cube, is now kind of uh, showing on this concrete layer. So that's all we need to do there for now. Um, now we can start our timber texture layers. So let's go to here, again, Control A to select all, Control C to copy, back into here and just do Control V, making sure again it's under our cube layer, which is fine. And I'm just gonna zoom out and do Control T to transform. If we come around here, we can see the little rotate symbol. So if I hold down Shift and rotate that, it'll keep it pretty uh, pretty much orthogonal. And now we want to place this, uh, we can do the, the left side first. 
So we can come in here and you want to, a couple things here that you want to make sure is that, make sure of is that your texture is covering the entire face. So you don't want this like in there or anything like that. You want to make sure that it's out, out here and you can kind of adjust these little uh, handles, zoom, uh, kind of drag them in and out to, to get at the right scale and, and location. So let's do that again. Sorry, Control T, Shift to rotate that, that around. Okay, I want to make sure that I'm covering this here and then drag this in here, something like that. And then holding down Control to drag this in there like that. Holding down Control because we want to kind of match now this perspective, right? So the panel's obviously going to get or appear a little bit smaller as they get further and further back. Something like that. Let's go a little more just to make sure we've got the full panel also on the end there. All right, that's pretty much it. So hit enter on that. And now we can hide this off again just to make it a little easier to work. And if we come back in here and again our lasso tool or polygon lasso tool and just quickly kind of pick each of these edges or points for that face, turn this back on and then again add layer mask. So that's going to crop out basically everything in the background. Um, note also this is a, a non-destructive way of working so if we want we can um, kind of bring parts of that back afterwards by, you know, changing from black to white um, some of those parts of that layer mask. Um, so that's done. So now we can repeat that for the other two faces, but because we've already done this, we probably don't need to do it all from scratch. So what I'll do is just select this layer and just do Control J to duplicate. So you can see it's copied that layer there. And if I hit V to drag this out, you can see that there. And just go Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal to get it kind of fitting this and then probably just bump it over a little bit um, and it needs a little bit of an adjustment so we're just going to select it, control T and just drag this tiny bit so it fits that face kind of nicely like that perfect um, now again for the top one um, we could duplicate either one of these but if we want the uh, these panels here to kind of continue up and then wrap around. Um, we're better off duplicating this one because it's already kind of in the right spot. So we'll select that and then go edit again, transform, flip vertical now. Oops, sorry, control Z. So we want to duplicate that first, so control J first. Edit, transform, flip vertical, and drag this up here. And then control T and kind of get this pretty right for now or as close as we can and then just drag these points again to fit that cube so holding down control on each of these points like that it's a little bit tricky once you've kind of adjusted these and Trying to get it perfect, but it's kind of almost there, I think. Like that. That's about right. Hit enter. And you can probably just nudge this a little bit there just to fill those little white gaps. There we go. Cool. So that's pretty much it there. Now, the last thing that I would do here is just uh, add a little bit of, of shadow in some of these edges where the cube is touching the ground. So you can see here it looks a little bit like it's kind of floating, it's not quite as dark, whereas here we've got these shadows. So we just want to kind of ground it a little bit, so add, add a little bit of that uh, ambient occlusion basically between these two, um, two surfaces or two objects. So to do that, I would come up here and just go Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Brightness Contrast, click OK. And then just bring the brightness down to like the kind of darkness that you want your shadows to be, so something like that for now. And then with this layer mask, if we just do control backspace, you can see it fills it all black, which was our background color over here to the left. So it's filled it all black, which is basically meant that it's not applying this, this brightness or this shadow to anything at all now. But if we hit B, so the brush button up here, 
And now with our white brush, kind of choose to brush on the parts where we want to, that shadow to show up again. So you can do something like this. And I've got the opacity here set to 33%, but you can play around with that, whatever feels kind of right for you. Um, and just, I just find that backing that opacity down makes it a little bit easier to slowly layer things on. There we go, and this is pretty much, um, at this point, it's kind of just a little bit of brush and getting it feeling and looking right. Um, something like that I think is pretty pretty good. Um, and that's pretty much it. The only other thing that I might like to do here is add a bit of color to that uh, the concrete texture in the background. It does look a little bit desaturated. So I'd come to that layer here and go layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. And if you tick this on here, use previous layer to create clipping mask. What it's going to do is apply this hue saturation uh, changes that we were about to do only to this concrete layer. So if we were to add other layers below this afterwards, they wouldn't be affected by this hue saturation, which is um, exactly what we want. So let's hit OK. And you can see that little arrow there, that's that clipping mask. So it's saying that this hue saturation, whatever we decide to do in here, it's only affecting this, uh, this concrete layer. Right? So uh, what we can do now is tick on colorize. You can see that it's given a little bit of a, a tinge. We can play around with this hue, but I think that it might actually be kind of what we're after, just to keep, give it a, a little bit of a warm feel that also matches this timber texture and completes our scene. So that's pretty much it at this point. That's kind of how we can go from, uh, if I just group all these, create a group, and say uh, layers, Put this in here and turn all these off and this one so we've gone from basically something like this added all the layers and then add a little bit of shadow to really quickly kind of complete that scene and it's the same kind of process whether you're working on interior or exterior work um, or applying materials to any scene really um, you can follow this kind of process and slowly slowly build up that scene and then come backwards and forwards if needed to tweak little things and bits and pieces here and there. That's pretty much it. Hope that was helpful, guys. If so, hit that like button. Um, leave any comments, questions, or suggestions below. And if you do want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and the little bell to get notified. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.